gotta unlock the passenger door first or it won't start. That's intentional, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That prevention. Let's see how she's feeling today. Step one, success. Uh, moving forward this year, we got the Turbo the Daily project done. It shreds, it rips, it's everything that I would have hoped and more honestly, it made uh, right about the same power that I think that it should have and uh, this thing absolutely shreds. So since I wanna go and drive this thing on the track a little bit more now, I think that it's wise. We should probably put a roll cage in it because it's fast enough now where, let's be honest, you could probably find yourself getting in some trouble if you're, uh, if you're hot boying it a little bit too hard. So Turbo the Daily is done. Now I feel like it's time to cage the Daily. And that's definitely the next step with this car is that safety is always first. So I got some crappy seats in there. We're gonna have to replace those. And uh, I haven't, uh, I don't think I've caged an E36 yet. So definitely did my E46 last year and uh, it turned out awesome. I loved it. So I think this is just the, the progression of this E36. It's gonna be less and less like a daily uh, as we go, but uh, really stoked to throw a cage in this thing. And uh, I guess first things first, we gotta rip the interior out because we need room for the roll cage to go. So we're gonna kind of highlight the process of what I do personally uh, when I build a roll cage. It's definitely not the way that everybody else does it, but this is kind of what I have learned over the years, and I've been doing roll cages for almost 10 years now. So this one should be no different. We're just gonna make this thing pretty much Formula D spec, just because in case it has to get turned into a comp car for whatever reason, you might as well keep it to that Formula D spec. So really looking forward to this, and I figure let's, let's just rip the inside out, right? No more daily at all. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we gotta take all this stuff out of the inside of the car. We need to be able to make room for those tubes and I like to place the tubes as far away from your head as possible. So that gives you A, the most headroom so you're not banging your head on the cage when you're driving, which is terrible. Uh, and B, it's, uh, if you do end up rolling your car, there's much more crumple zone before it gets to the vital parts, AKA your dome. So uh, first thing we're gonna do is I wanna take the seats out. Uh, probably gonna have to yank the dash out because those A pillars are gonna go down. They're gonna have to go through the dash. Uh, we're gonna do the door cards and then this one actually has a sunroof in it. So the sunroof is gonna have to go so we can push that main hoop up as far as we possibly can, all the way pretty much touching the skin of the roof. And to do all this, I've enlisted the help of my friend Zach. He is a aspiring drifter and he's taken apart actually quite a few BMWs at this point. So he is the interior taker outer master. So uh, we're gonna roll my toolbox over here and me and him are gonna tag team on it and get it started. You ready? Let's go. Me. Man, tough stuff. Took all about four seconds to get that out. That's pretty nice. Almost done. Wow, that's ugly. Maybe I should convert it to like normal roll up and down windows. Do they make those for the 36? I think for the 36, yeah. Do a window net, yeah. That'll keep all the water out. I've never done an E36, but I've done I think six E46s now. So the interior game's strong. Uh, yeah, nice and clean under there, huh? This is like the most iconic thing to do is once you get the front seats out, you have to sit in the back. Of course, it's like limo style. Excuse me, chauffeur. Take us to the, uh, you know, somewhere fancy, I don't know. Or I could try and drift like this with my feet. I've seen a guy in Europe who does that. And then I have to have like a stick that hits the gas. Bye -bye. I'm really into how this uh, this headliner just pretty much rests on your head pretty much the entire time. Maybe we should yank this thing out. This thing's pretty pretty gross, to be honest with you. Ugh. Gross! <laughs> I regret that. Of here nerd oh that thing is nasty dude it's all sticky and gross what do you think is it gonna land on my head the drain lines are kind of gonna hold it like if water leaks past the seal on the inside it's got to go somewhere it can't just sit in there else it's gonna rust so these drain lines right here uh, that's for water to escape out and it has it on all four corners and then it just leaks down inside the chassis and then it drips out the like the very bottom of the car uh, just to keep things from rusting, I believe. 
It just needs to drop down basically on top of your head. I feel like something's holding it right there. Oh my god! It's heavy! <laughs> nice! Oh yeah. I'm actually pretty stoked that this piece isn't glass. Like on my 240 it was glass and that means that you don't really have a plug because now I have a massive hole in my roof, right? So I'm gonna try and figure out how to get this piece off of here and then probably just build some little brackets on the inside, set that plug piece back in there and just bolt it in for good. <laughs> Holy crap, I didn't know they were that long. Oh yeah, drain, you're out of here. Maybe not. Once you get this bottom one out, you yank them from the bottom. Okay. I and mean, that's how it is in the 46. Yeah, maybe, right? Spend plenty of time under here when we did the fuel pump. Yeah, this is pretty much every day. It's like, get going, take a phone call, waste another hour, hang out. Can't go to lunch until you get more of the car torn apart. I, th I think I think that dash needs to come out. Like I think that's that's where we're at because I know that there's some AC stuff back there and I know there's some heater core stuff back there and I'm not using any of that anymore. Yeah, and you can't get that carpet piece out as I remember right unless you take that lower half off. Right. Get out of here. For sale. Seat belts. Perfect condition. Never used. Man, there's a lot of crap in this thing. That thing's gross. Yeah, so I don't know what that thing is. Is it heavy? Then it's expensive, put it back. I have to take the pressure washer to the inside of this thing. Yeah, it's not a bad idea, really. I'm, I'm certainly not opposed to it. Man, that's a lot of wires. I wish I knew what any of them did. Well, I got a standalone ECU, so I'm gonna take it out. So you just gotta start the car, let it run, and then start clipping all of them one by one. And if it turns off, then you know. That's a, actually a pretty good idea. I'm just curious, I can't tell, yes or no, but I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the previous owner to this car had a dog. So it looks like we pretty much have everything out, uh, except for the dash area. Like all the door cards, all the stuff around the back, the sunroof we got out, all the crap that was on the rear deck. We really got pretty much everything out. We made a massive mess and we pretty much ruined this car, but that, that's right on track for us. So last thing is we're gonna have to tackle this dash. So I deleted the AC and the heat out of it when I did the turbo kit. And uh, so that means that there's a whole bunch of stuff behind the dash that we don't necessarily need. I'd love to get rid of it. Uh, and like I said earlier, I need to get the dash out because those A pillars are gonna have to run right through it. So um, that's gonna be next. I'm just gonna yank the steering wheel off because I think it's gonna be in the way once we go to take the dash out. All right is out. This we're not gonna throw away, I don't think. Yeah. Wow, we're in it now. Let's just take this thing right to the dumpster. It's amazing how much stuff they shoehorn into these cars. Well, I've had about enough fun for one day. I don't know about you. I think so. My hands are dirty and uh, we have a lot of crap to throw away. I think that dumpster is gonna be dead full to the top after we start throwing some of this stuff away. It's pretty, pretty amazing how much stuff that they managed to jam into these cars. Like, you really wouldn't think that all this would even fit in there, but it does, for sure. So, uh, I don't know. Let's start throwing this crap away, I guess, right? I think so. <laughs>
been 24 hours. Are you still stoked on the project? I am, I am stoked on the project. I think the biggest thing at this point is I'm like, I hate that wire. I absolutely, like absolutely hate it. It just is really not tickling me in the right way right now and I want it all gone, like all of it. I think I might have to outsource that, maybe Unicorn Garage, Heart Sock Racing, uh, the one who helped me in my comp car. I'm probably gonna have to hit him up and get some sort of chassis harness going for this thing because it's just, it's gross, it's really gross in there.